back to another episode of United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Robert with the in the U.S., and we have our co-host Lionel, who is in Canada. What's up, Lionel? Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully all the good stuff. Hopefully, I'm bumping into the mic again. Hopefully, nothing but good stuff. Uh, I, I believe it or not, I'm just checking on my, my on my feed, uh, and I wasn't going to say anything, but. I, I, I might as well bring this up now because I just got a pop up. I just want to make sure that there aren't going to be any technical difficulties. We did have technical difficulties last week. Uh, that's why there was not an episode uh, that we could put together. There were unfortunately gaps in it. And video wise, we could have edited it out, but audio, it would have just been terrible. So it, rather, it wasn't worth the effort. So our apologies to you, but we'll get on with this week. And of course, this week, uh, Robert, you want to let him know what we're going to start because right now I'm thinking I my yeah, so, numbers look good. Yeah. So uh, this week we're going to actually talk about the eclipse that's occurring, and and actually uh, Lionel is going to have a much better view. I won't have actually any of the totality in my area where I live, uh, but that's okay because I got to see one back in 2017, and he didn't, so now it's flip flopped, and he's going to get to experience this one, and I won't. But uh, it's always an amazing experience. Oh, that's right. I forgot you're not in the path. But you know what? You're, you're what? You're within an hour and a half drive, are you not? Um, no, it's, it's farther than that to, to really oh, have really? any kind of real totality. I mean. Well, you want it to be more than 12 seconds, obviously. So I do. <laughs> and it's um, a sliver. You know, I don't. There's no point in that, but yeah, no. but, but I believe you are in at least a 95%. So you can still enjoy if you get the glasses, that is, if you still have them from last time, um, then you can still enjoy seeing the eclipse. Uh, uh, if it's like 95% or whatever, and, 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 uh, you get some nice, excuse me, some nice pictures as well. Uh, I, yeah, would, I don't, I don't think I'm as close as you think we are. Um, well, let me put it to you this way. Um, Toronto is at least 20 minutes away from the path of totality and is at 99%. If I drive up to Barrie, that's actually another half an hour away with no traffic at all and is at 96%. Uh, I have to go another 100 miles further north to drop down to 90%. So, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah i i would have Pretty to close. drive i would have to drive probably two to three hours just to get on the edge of the totality line oh okay so you are a little further it's, it's like way it's like way uh west from me and then it kind of cuts up above kentucky yeah and if you went but, dead straight you would probably be four hours or five <laughs> yeah what's north yeah, what's north of you is it tennessee Am I thinking wrong? I'm in Tennessee. A ten it's Kentucky. Uh, sorry, that's not what I meant. That's what I meant. Maybe sorry. we should talk about <laughs> geographics this time. <laughs> we can, maybe we should. I meant we can learn the we can learn the map together. <laughs> I meant Kentucky. I was thinking of Louisville as 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 you know what? I'm because we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And with Louisville versus Louisville, which as you pronounce it, it's funny. We a lot of people would be thinking, oh well, why is he pronouncing Louisville? It's Louisville. No, it's not. It's, you you you've been there. Uh, you you know what people call it. It's like people saying, "Oh, it's Toronto." No, it's not. It's Toronto. I mean, Toronto, yeah. Lu it's Louisville, Toronto. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so, you, so Louisville. But for me, anyways, anything. I mean, I'm yeah. sure I'll have a nice sunny day, and I won't even know anything's happening. Uh, well, no. If you if you're not paying attention, no, yeah, <laughs> you won't. But I'm just saying, if if you still got the glasses and you want to take a peek, it'll still be interesting. But the interesting thing is, look down at the shadows. It, oh, when it gets yeah. to around like, or before it's when it's when it's at a, at about fifty percent, when it's covering about fifty percent, check check the shadows on the ground and they'll be crescent shaped. It's really cool. It's, oh totally yeah, yeah, thought, it was amazing. I totally thought about that that feature, that not feature phenomena. Yeah. But yeah, and, it was amazing. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say the the one you get to experience is actually going to be a longer period of totality than what we had. So you'll actually get, you know, a longer. Um, oh, what did you have? To, 
in, in 17. I think it was seven or eight minutes. I think you're getting like 12 minutes or something. Seven something or eight like minutes. No, no. <laughs> Listen, I'm pretty sure the world record is seven or eight minutes in recorded history. Um, um, I remember uh, reading no. something, obviously. No. You you oh, would have yeah. had somewhere in the three minute to four minute and change range. Um, we have a longer one, yes. I'm pretty sure that's true, but I didn't know it was longer for everywhere. It depends on where you are and how close to the center of the path. I'm going to a place that's going to be almost close to dead center. Um, but it's also towards, you know, getting way past the halfway point of, of, of North America by then. So um, it's going to be about three minutes and 50 seconds ish. If I get into that area, if I can't, I might have to settle for three, three and a half minutes or three minutes and 10 seconds or something like that in another location. If I have to change because of weather or cloud cover. Um, yeah, I don't know where I got the, I, I it, again, I was, I, there's so many articles floating around. I probably read something, you know, you know what, that happens. Uh, I, we're all guilty of it. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't know what what your totality was, but if it was less, it was probably like thirty seconds to a minute less at the most. Um, perhaps yeah, you it, it, we, I mean it was long enough to really totality. experience the whole thing in, in a pretty fantastic and way. Right. I mean it, it it truly got dark. You know the you know crickets started chirping. I mean the whole thing that they talk about the little oh, moon shapes on the, the crickets, ground. I mean. Yeah. It, it was literally like the trippiest thing I have ever experienced. And we actually had these shirts made up and we have pictures of all the family. I'll have to send that, that to you when we're good. done. So you can see. Cool. It, it was really a cool experience. Um, we had a bunch of family come over and yeah, it was, it was a yeah. cool time. Well, I, I do have some advice for a lot of people out there. A lot of people are going to be thinking automatically right away. Um, let's say they live in a small town that's not far from the totality. They got to drive half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. And they want to get into whatever town in Texas or whatever town in, uh, I'm not, whatever, Kentucky, if it goes through Kentucky, I can't remember, um, or whatever state, right? Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people will be like, okay, let's just go to this small town because it's a small town, not a big city. But everybody that is within three hours of the place, if it's close to the center of the totality, and not just in it, but literally close to the center where you get the longest amount. That's where everyone's going to be going. And tourist places yeah. are going to be horrible. Places that aren't tourist places are going to be bad too. Um, I'm going to a place that's probably originally I thought was going to be good. It might not be. And I may have to change, I may have to change my plan at the last minute. So I'm going to have like five or six backup areas to go to. Uh, some of which I want to make sure I can get to within an hour. So if it's not going to work, I need to find a back road that I can get to. Because highways will not be passable. Uh, a lot of people leave late and they don't get where they need to go. Um, and it, and, and it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be crowded. Niagara Falls yeah. uh, is going to be so bad, probably on both sides of the border, by the way. They, I haven't heard a lot about it from, from New York State, but from Ontario... Um, New Niagara Falls, Ontario has already preemptively declared a state of emergency that is technically already in effect so that they can actually jump into action at the drop of a hat without having to go to any more councils. They don't have to go to the province because when a municip municipality declares a state of emergency, then that automatically means they can make one phone call and, and the province has to send somebody to help if necessary. Uh, because it's a state yeah. of emergency. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same in most municipalities versus the state or the county in the U.S., I would assume, uh, except it would be National Guard, if necessary, that would come to help. If necessary. <laughs> not, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about for defense, like being attacked, but I'm pretty sure National yeah, Guard right. will still come out to help for things like floods, right? Or crowd control if it's too big for local police forces, right? Um, which is fine. Uh, we do, they do that here in Canada too. So they're going to be prepared. But the, the, the thing is, is they're expecting the record-breaking crowds in Niagara Falls, which is scary because if you've ever been to Niagara Falls on a hot summer day in July, you will know that you cannot walk down the street. <laughs> you have to wait sometimes three hours just to get next to the falls to take a picture. It's insane. Um, I've never. I, I haven't been. That's one of my places I want to go. I'm oh, sorry. 
I say I haven't been. That's one of my places I want to go. But but you keep you keep de delaying it. Like I've told you like a thousand times. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just drive to drive up. Take a plane, whatever it is you feel like doing. I'll meet you at the damn border, or the airport, or the train station, or whatever the hell yeah. mode of travel. Yeah, we're definitely and, we'll and, definitely make that trip sometime. Maybe me and my boys. I don't think my wife's too interested. She doesn't really care. She doesn't really, but, uh, really she doesn't want to see Niagara Falls. Really? No, she doesn't really care. You know what she's gonna miss out on? The flying saucer. <laughs> it's a restaurant. It, it, it is it is an iconic restaurant that's been around for decades. Every time I go to Niagara Falls. I have to go to the Flying Saucer. And I go once or twice a year. So it's just yeah. necessary. <laughs> it's one of those things. Oh, I did, I did find it's just a that... greasy spoon, by the way. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's not like a <laughs> special restaurant. But it's just, it's a tradition. I'm sorry, go ahead. If you're dead center totality, you're going to have about four minutes, which is pretty long. Which yeah. they say it's twice as long as 2017. So 2017, if I remember correctly, it was a little over two minutes. Oh, really? That um, was short. Like two, yeah. two and a half minutes is what is what we had. But one thing I forgot about that's really cool is the minutes leading up to totality are pretty fantastic because there's certain yeah. phases of as it starts to get blocked out, this eerie, gloomy, like um total recall looking kind of <laughs> you know glow that's going on uh, well the glow comes rough. after is the bailey's beads you might be thinking about um just before it goes into totality and you still have to keep your glasses on for bailey's beads by the way uh because it, even even to someone the thing is, is what happens is as the moon's crossing it all of the craters are partially blocking that last sliver of sunlight but that's a lot of craters so each one of those craters is blocking a little bit. And then there's a little bit of sun and a little bit of blockage, a little bit of sun. And you get all these beads and it looks like a pearl necklace or something. They call it, I'm not sure what Bailey is for. I should look yeah. that up. Bailey's beads. Uh, the interesting thing is when it goes out the other end, you never see that because it happens so bloody quickly. You don't actually get to see the Bailey bead thing. But what you do get is a diamond ring effect. So you, if it is really quick and there's a big thing of a ball of bright ball of light on the one side and, and then slightly on, on the ends of it and it's still dark around and you still can see the Corona and part of it, even with that. Uh, so it right. kind of looks like a diamond ring, but that only yeah. lasts for about a half a second um, before yeah. it gets too bright and overpowers it. And you absolutely at the first sign of that happening, you can't look at it and go, oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Now I'll put my glasses on. <laughs> it's got to be, oh, here it comes. And you get your glasses on immediately. You'll also see it better with your glasses on at that point. You won't see it at all with well, your glasses off because you won't be able to look at it. Right. What, what I'm referring to is, is as it begins to start coming across the sun, you yeah. get this weird, when I say glow, I don't mean glow. I mean, like, it's kind of a that dusky, you know, like the sun's setting, but it's not really setting. Oh, I see. Kind of oh, really you're weird, like the sun itself. Heat. You're talking about the atmosphere. You mean yeah, the yeah, atmosphere. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just yeah, really yeah. weird, yeah. like glow to it. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah, it starts to get about ninety percent full, and <laughs> it starts to be like a little twilighty. But the interesting thing is, is that it's still brighter than you see at twilight, which is odd. But everything does change, so. At right around that point when it starts to get around 95 ish percent and you still have to be wearing glasses and it's still technically light but it's getting darker but it's not dark yet uh they say now you if you wear green what is it green and red i think like christmas colors basically then the the red looks darker and more but but pops more and green stands out much much more so than things like gray or lighter shades of, of whatever hmm. um because your eyes don't see the proper colors i think it's like blues or something don't show up uh, in the dark so yeah so you get some of those uh, old school 3d glasses you used to <laughs> look at the tv with <laughs> uh, yeah i don't think so you go blind pretty quick so, <laughs> anywho uh the state of emergency Niagara Falls. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that's a good idea? G given that that uh, that on a regular day, and again, you haven't been there, but I tell you, I've done this every year. Um, in the last five years, I have not been able to park my car in the parking lot I would normally go to. Um, it's just not possible. First of all, the few parking lots you can get into, 
um, they're unbelievably expensive. Like, like yeah. people are going there to be there all day and they're being told it's $30 an hour. Wow. An hour. Uh, these, these are not event parking lots. These are just parking lots for people to walk around the falls and they're nowhere yeah. near the falls. Um, and $25, $30 an hour. It's ridiculous. There are parking that lots ridiculous. that cost a little less and there's other options too. You can park further and take a bus or walk. Um, there are some areas where I would prefer to park where one where it has like metered parking because uh, it's a park. Uh, it's still not super cheap, but you know, twenty five dollars for the entire day or something like that. And and if yeah. you go to Niagara Falls, that's a drop in the bucket because you're going to spend money. You've gone on a trip, right? Even if it's a day trip, I'd be happy to spend twenty five dollars to park all day at Niagara Falls and then just be able to yeah. walk around all day. So there is a place that's relatively close to the falls that I discovered last year uh, and so i would go there and i would park there uh it's a little further than the falls like if you're gonna try to go past it and head to buffalo um but you're still in niagara falls <laughs> and, and then you just walk back and it's not very far quarter of a mile uh yeah. you can check out the falls and then there's a quite a long walk along the falls and stuff to see inside down down below and behind the falls all that kind of stuff and then all the tourist attractions and uh, that they have there in the in the what is Skyline Tower or whatever it's called, stuff like that, and yeah. all the casinos. If you're into casinos, uh, the casinos. Um, there's two things: people who are used to big, huge casinos and have gone to places like Vegas and and Reno and whatever else, right? They they they, they might first say, "Well, this is nothing like Vegas." But but anybody who's been to casinos anywhere else will say. This is maybe not be the biggest thing I've ever seen, but there's, these are nice, and they are. And yeah. They're not. They're not tiny. They're actually. Oh, I've been to some tiny some casinos, really and, and, and inside a casino is a casino, really. I mean, some are bigger, yeah, I know. but it, I've all never the same. Understood why, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never understood why some people would would, would actually complain about a, a casino being too small when it's got like uh, yeah. uh, seven hundred slot machines. You know, uh, right. 250 blackjack tables. And, yeah. and, and, and honestly, any casino that has uh, a high roller room, you know, uh, can't be doing all that bad. <laughs> like the high roller room that you have to have credentials to get into. Uh, yeah, clearly, yeah. I've, I've, never I've, never, one. I've never gone into one of those rooms. Well, <laughs> I don't have deep enough pockets for high roller rooms. Does, does, <laughs> does, does this look like a Stanley to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's your status this is now. a big oh, I, got Stanley. Okay. This is I got a big... mine from target i got a target stanley that's even more elite <laughs> i didn't even get this from walmart i think this is a dollar store that's walmart. funny this is like three yeah I, honestly i don't really um i don't understand the. i mean i guess i kind of understand the state of emergency thing but i remember when yeah. it happened here and again my house is was literally almost dead center totality. So, I mean, we were like right in the middle nice. of the line and I don't remember the state of Tennessee issuing any kind of state of emergency. Um, I do remember obviously them saying, Hey, look, there's gonna be a lot more traffic, you know, like hotels were booked up for like months in advance. And so there was a lot more people for sure, but it wasn't like super crazy well, and I think nothing, you know, happened. So I don't, I guess I don't understand the, State well, I think that but. there's a number of reasons why that is true, though. Uh, one of them is is pretty obvious in that it was, you know, almost cut in half by the amount of time that this one is going to be. So the less time it is, the less people are willing to travel further for it. Uh, when they when they hear this is going to be the longest one they're going to see, and we're not going to see another one for a hundred years or whatever. Twenty forty five, I think. <laughs> not here. It's going to be in it, only one part, and and very. No, I think split. they said that the next one in the states is that it's going to be is twenty forty. Not not clear across. It's going to be. It's going to go across a popular. I don't, I don't path. know about that, but it is going to go across the eastern part of the states. It's going to be popular, a popular path, absolutely. But it, it's it's not it's not going to be for very long. It's it's really only the eastern seaboard, I, as far as I can remember. That's what I saw on the map. I'm I may be thinking about the wrong one, but I'm pretty sure that was it. Um, don't get me wrong. If I had the money, I think I might like to go, 
because I think you, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see up from Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and I've never been. <laughs> so I, yeah. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> long as it's not spring break i ain't going to spring break do i do i look 22 to you no <laughs> um sean gone wild <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, anyways i was just thinking though uh i could imagine that there might be some places in the u.s that might actually consider the idea of a state of emergency as well and i i would think first of all niagara falls new york would be the first place to think of it because there's a lot of people that are going to try to cross the border into Canada because they like the view better on the Canadian side and they're going to get stuck on the freaking bridge. You yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> I could actually see the lineup being ridiculously long, going both ways, by the way, going both ways uh, and, and getting clogged up to the point where there'll be people on the bridge waiting to get across. Well, if you want to take a trip to Spain or Greenland, you can catch one in 2026. Oh, That's a bucket list place, man. We, I would love to go to Greenland with a Nikon Z8. Yes, I said Z, not Z. Uh, How do you and, explain and, that? And, right? a, and a, a 180 to 600 millimeter lens and take pictures Canadian. of puffins and stuff like that. You know what a puffin is, right? A puffin? A puffin. No, no, it's a funny look. We'll just we'll leave it at that. It's a funny looking bird. Maybe I'll put the bird right here, and you can see it later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta remember what to, the timestamp on that. Twenty one minutes and some seconds. Okay. Anyways, um, all right. So, uh, uh, Texas. I was thinking we talked about this before we got on 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 the air here. Um, I don't know if any place in Texas would because. Texas is used to large crowds. Like, there's, there's like lots of big urban centers there, and they have more of than just like a one city infrastructure, and a lot of small towns. So when it yeah. goes through Texas, it's a big state, and it's going pretty much from one end of Texas to the other. So there's there's a lot of places in Texas that people can go, and uh, so I don't think they're ever going to have to consider that because there's so much space for them to go in there. And I think when you start getting into some of the tighter states, the ones where they barely skirt them, and there's like one bigger city and a whole bunch of small towns that are dead center in the middle of it, that those yeah. are the ones that have to worry about it because all of the interstates are going to go right through there. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is where everybody's yeah. coming from and where everybody's going to. Um, oh, so this is interesting. Um, not to change your subject, but... The next solar eclipse after this one is actually in 2033, but only Alaska is going to get uh, totality. Then in 2044, <clears throat> totality will be confirmed to Western Canada, Montana, and North Dakota. And then there won't be another U.S. eclipse spanning coast to coast until 2045. Oh, oh, oh that is a coast to coast, the 2045 one then. Yeah. I thought that was an eastern seaboard one. Okay. Well, not according to what uh, this news. I don't know what I was looking name. at. Name.com is. <laughs> I may have read the map wrong because it basically had every single uh, eclipse in the last 80 years and every one for the next 200 years all on the same map. So with all these arrows pointing, I was probably looking at the wrong one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interesting. And, yes, it's funny it. how they can uh, know that so far in advance, you know. I mean, obviously... Yeah. The, the rotation, the spin, I mean, all this stuff that happens universally is uh, known. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a known equation, so I guess I can calculate it out. But well, you know, you know where I think it's still kind of interesting problem, to me. Yeah, the, where I think the biggest problems will be, honestly, are Niagara Falls. And, and anywhere near Niagara Falls, and unfortunately, I will be. <laughs> but um, I think just about everywhere else, there's enough places to travel to and enough room to travel around because it also yeah. misses a lot of major waterways until it hits the Great Lakes and skirts along the St. Lawrence and then jumps over it at Montreal and into Canada and then continues on. Um, but up to that point, um, there's a lot of, I, I don't know, I, I guess tornado alley <laughs> that follows for yeah. a while. 
you know, Northern Tornado Alley. Um, and then and it, it, it kind of gets along and it goes along the bottom part of Lake Erie, uh, almost at the same angle as Lake Erie, which is kind of weird if you look at the map of it. Um, it's yeah. like almost the same the same shoreline going across it. So when I get to the uh, eastern tip, right where Buffalo and Fort Erie meet, uh, where the end of Lake Erie uh, is and the Niagara River begins, uh, is, is, uh, is pretty much where Fort Erie is. So uh, that's where I was planning to go so I could get down the, uh, as far down the lake as possible. Um, yeah. But I'm thinking twice now, mainly because a lot of other people might be considering that same path. And most of them will be from Fort Erie. Not everybody's going to stay in their backyard. Some people are going to want to actually look out over the lake. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of the idea I want. Uh, I want that view over the lake. Uh, yeah. I, I would have loved to have been able to do it in Niagara Falls. Because if you get the right angle the sun will actually be over the falls depending on where you're standing. And the picture was insane because you could take, yeah. you could take several pictures and merge them together. So you could sit able to see the falls and the eclipse. And yeah. that would, that would be something else. So be, I really like those pictures that people do where they, they follow the eclipse. And so they have all these different shots and they, they show it as yeah. it's arcing, you know, and it's, you saw that was, total totality. Yeah. And then as it's, it's pretty cool. That was my original plan uh, until until my equipment went bye bye, and now I've been using my my Pixel Eight Pro, which I think will surprise some people about how good it'll be able to do. But yeah. no, it's I, I think very it's difficult for me to do that style because I'll have to move the tripod manually, and then I'll have to actually adjust the angles of each one of the pictures, and then merge them together. It's yeah. possible. I might give it a shot. I don't know. I might. I might try, because the truth of the matter is, I'm probably going to crop them all. So if I leave enough room for the cropping, it might make it easier to actually do that. Yeah, yeah, right? it'd be cool. It's possible. I'll be looking forward to seeing them. But hey, little side note. I don't know if you knew this, but my grandfather <laughs> used to own a house on Lake Erie. His backyard no was way. the bay, and we used to just walk out the back door into his boat and go fishing. Oh man! See, now here's the thing: you, you know, oddly, in all the years I've lived in this region of Canada, uh, this is the only lake. And keep in mind, one of them is only available in the U.S., <laughs> and that's Lake Michigan. You cannot touch Lake Michigan without going into the United States of America. It does not go into Canada. It's the only one. Um, but I have put my toe into every single great lake. <laughs> and last year was the first time I actually dipped it into Lake Huron, by the way. Uh, it took a long time to get into that one. But I've still never actually stopped my car and put my toe into Lake Erie. Uh, and I've been <laughs> close, but I've never been to it. I've never actually, I've seen it I've, driving down a country road. But I'm like, yeah. oh, it's late. It's going. I got to go home. And this is somebody's yard. I can't stop here. <laughs> yeah. But um, he lived in Ohio, in Ohio, so he, he we I, and I'll never forget it. Every time we go visit him, I'll never forget it because we used to pass by. Um, I think it was called Cedar Point Amusement Park. Was yeah, it, there's a Cedar and, Point. It's still there, actually. I don't know, but okay, you'd have on, to pass <laughs> by that. And then he lived down this peninsula. And there was only one way in, one way out. And uh, we said, oh, it was yeah. so okay, so I think I know where you're talking about. Yeah. I'm getting kind of familiar with the way Lake Erie looks on the map, uh, just because there's a lot of places around there I haven't seen. Like, there's a peninsula on the Canadian side um, that is insanely long. Like, you're probably talking uh, half an hour, 45 minutes worth of driving once mm -hmm. you get on it to get to the tip. Uh, if you can even drive to the end, I don't know if you can drive all the way to the end. I think you know you go a certain by distance and, and then have to walk the last couple of uh, miles or something. Um, but I've always wanted to go there. And, and that, honestly, that would be the absolute perfect place because it would be within, I think about, it would be within 10 miles of the center of the path of totality, meaning you would get about three minutes and 80 seconds or 80 seconds. Jesus. <laughs> 
And to answer your question, Cedar Point does three still minutes, exist. Three minutes and 50 seconds or something like that, right? Um, close to four minutes. And 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 it would it would be an awesome place to see it. And also it would it would get pitch black because you're in the middle of a lake. There's there's no city lights anywhere. Yeah. You're in the middle of a lake that's just that looks like an ocean. And and I I mean I live almost on the shore of Lake Ontario and it look it's massive, but it is by far the smallest of the Great Lakes. It's to put that into perspective, it's by far the smallest one. You can't yeah. see across it except on the sunniest of days. If you're on slightly higher ground uh, on a really sunny day, you might be able to see across it. Like, for instance, on the southern side, you can see Toronto because tall buildings. But there's no yeah. way I can see the southern shore from Toronto unless I'm up in a high building. But yet it's the smallest Great Lake. <laughs> so, yeah, no, anyways, um, it's really before. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the map and I see that, you know, you'd have to go down. Um, to get to it down this Cedar Point Road. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where his house was, but I just remember we used to always go by that. But yeah, we used to have a good time. It was it was always a lot of fun. It was it was crazy. Uh, where do you, where do you say he lived? Uh see by Cedar Point, Ohio. Cedar Point, Ohio. Oh, and actually I can't find where it says Cedar Point, Ohio. But I'm guessing. Well, it's, I, it's by Cedar. I, I'm going to guess um, it's near African Safari Wildlife Park. That looks like a peninsula and there's a bunch of islands. It could be a different peninsula you're talking about, though. I don't know. But that's a huge peninsula. It's, it's, not, far from, it's not far from Toledo. Yeah, I just, I, I have some really fond memories of there. One time we got caught out on the lake. We were in his uh, canoe, and his canoe did have a, a motor in case you know we didn't want to paddle anymore. But um, we got stuck out on the lake, and a storm brewed up. And man, the lake gets treacherous in the storm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I never forget that. It was uh, it was kind of hairy getting back to the. Did I, never, did I never share any storm pictures from Lake Ontario? Not that I, I recall. Th I thought I did uh, from a few years ago. Uh, it was just, it was a really windy day. And there were deck chairs, uh, or pardon me, uh, what we call Muskoka chairs, I think. And they're very similar to, what do they call them? Adirondack chairs, I believe, in the States. Are you familiar Sam with Dusty. that? Sorry. The name of the city just came. Sandusky, Ohio, is where he lived. That's where Cedar Point um, Park. So is. that's that's where I was thinking. That that's I was correct because Sandusky Bay. So I'm assuming it's it's over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get sidetracked here. I'm about to ask now: Is African Safari Wildlife Park probably better than <laughs> African Lion Safari in Ontario? <laughs> It's amazing how, how the the coldest parts of, of the U.S. and going into Canada are the, the, the two most popular places for lions. <laughs> what is that yeah, about? It like, doesn't make no any idea. sense to me. These places should be in Southern California and shit like that, right? Anyways, um, sorry for what I... Uh, what were we talking about now? <laughs> we're, we're How about we got sidetracked on the on Sandusky and, you know, uh, oh, we were talking about, you know, how uh, my trip, you know, that I took when we got stuck oh, yeah, out of yeah, the lake yeah, and right. whatnot. But yeah, it's just fond memories. But, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, back to, you know, the whole um, total eclipse thing. One thing I wanted to mention is that people, sometimes people are just so, capitalistic i'll say that it's kind of irritating and there's an article i read about um this travel agency that booked this trip for this company 250 people and the hotel they booked at or the whatever they booked at decided to just suddenly cancel all their reservations the guy lost like 30 grand because now to rebook it he's paying like 200 dollars more per room well, hats, paid first of all, hats off to the guy because he actually said, I can't pass that on to my customers. 
Um, yeah. A lot of places would have just, you know, taken the loss and then left the customers high and dry, you know, uh, maybe even closed down yeah, the but- business and opened up under a different name. A numbered name after later. Come uh, this on. guy decided you, you made to take a commitment hit. to these people, and you're just going to randomly cancel their reservation I, yeah, so you I can know. make more money. Listen, I mean, I get this it. This is apparently it's not. Just, it's not just him. It's not just him. Apparently, there are a lot of hotels in a lot of places, and some people may be saying, "I have no evidence of this yet," but it's possible that a few places in both sides of Niagara Falls uh, have have also been guilty of doing the same thing some of them more reputable hotels and some of them less reputable motels. <laughs> I, I don't know how many motels there are on the, on the American side. A lot. But the Canadian side, motels are as popular in Niagara Falls today as they were in 1978 Midwest America. Yeah. It's incredibly insane. They look like the same damn buildings that you and your dad drove to on a, on a weekend. You know, in 1981 or something like that, right? <laughs> they, they, they're incredible. They still have that same weird blue pastel looking paint on the sides and stuff like that. <laughs> you remember the motels, pastel looking colors? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I remember some motels, all right. <laughs> you know, you laugh at motels all, the, all you want, as long as there were no roaches and, and the sheets weren't dirty. Uh, I was fine with it. I didn't care. You knew, you knew what you, you what you were getting. It cost you very little money. You, know, you, you walk in there at two thirty in the morning, get a room, leave at noon, and Bob's your uncle. You're fine. Oh, you know, I mean, I've stayed at many. I've stayed at many. So, no man, motels I, say I, have I, saved I my it. life on the road, lots of times. Driving all the way from Toronto to, or Montreal even to to Winnipeg, it's that's a long drive, and I've done it yeah. twice without stopping. But I've also done it several times knowing that that was a stupid idea and stopping for yeah. the night. Uh, and, and, you know, it's weird. You wake up in a motel on the side of the road in an area that while you're driving at whatever breakneck speeds, doesn't look that interesting to you. But when you get up in the morning, you realize there's like nine deer 10 feet from where you <laughs> in your car and all these birds that you would normally never see. And it's like, yeah. oh, I'm in nature, man. That is so cool. And it can yeah. be anywhere. You could be in the middle of the desert, uh, somewhere in Arizona, and see things that you've never seen before if you're not from there, or in, in, in northwestern Ontario, or the middle of Alberta. Uh, it just doesn't matter. It, it's, it's pretty cool. It's like driving through Ontario. Every time I've driven from one end of Ontario to the other, east to west, west to east, I always forget that while they're not Rocky Mountains, they're not Adirondacks, they are actually mountains. So when you get right. up to, geez, I keep hitting my mic. You keep, you get up to the top of one and you go down and you start to notice as you get up that there are peaks in some of these. And, and I don't know, it's just the, the scenery is beautiful. And I don't know how I segued so far out of that, but I miss, you know what it is? I miss the driving vacations. and. Going to drive as far as I have to drive to go see the, which is not that far. It's an hour and a half or maybe two hours tops, depending on how far I choose to go um, to see the eclipse. And that's only because of traffic, by the way. It'd probably be an hour and 45 minutes tops if there was no traffic. Yeah. But that's going to be um, a nice trip for me because I don't, I don't get to do that as often as I'd like to. And I, I miss being able to, to get away and, and, and do those drives out to God knows where. I mean, I used to, I used to leave Winnipeg and drive all the way to Toronto or Montreal or Ottawa or wherever, or, or Chicago. I did that once too. And, uh, yeah. I, honestly, Winnipeg to Chicago is, is not the most scenic drive in the world, but as you pass through Minnesota between Minnesota and Chicago, the land, although not exactly mountainous is way nicer than Manitoba or North Dakota. Uh, not as nice yeah. as South Dakota, probably, but it does get a little bit rolling hill like, and then you cross over the Mississippi and everything. It's really nice, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll never forget. I, I've been into Canada one time, and we were up in Detroit, and we decided to cross bridge in Detroit. And 
I, I cross the bridge. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is Canada. Looks just like looks just like over there. <laughs> I didn't really go especially, into any especially cities. I just, <laughs> hey, especially I just drove a little town. while, turned yeah. around, and went back. <laughs> yeah, if, if you come to Toronto, you have to look around to find an IHOP. There's a couple, right? But you go to Niagara Falls, it's just right over the bridge. There's like nine IHOPs in walking distance from where you got <laughs> out of your car. And, and you're like, which IHOP do you want to go to? I don't know which one's the closest. Uh, don't go to the and one this... in that. I don't know the name of the hotel, but it's a red brick building. Don't go to that one. Terrible service. This is when you could cross the border with your driver's license. I didn't have a passport. I just showed my driver's license. Oh, no, license. I, I see, that's years ago. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how long I it's been. I you know, missed so. that. There was a time where you didn't even need that, unless you were the one driving. They wouldn't even ask. Yeah. They would just say, where are yeah. you going? Uh, I'm going to Chicago. Uh, how long are you going to be there? Uh, I was thinking two, maybe three days. Uh, where are you staying? Uh, motel, I haven't found it yet. We're just going to take the first free motel we can find. Plenty between the outside of the city and the inside of the city. Okay, you got anything yeah. to declare? Nope. All right, have a nice trip. That's it. You're done. Yeah. You go, you come back, and the Canadian guy says, uh, welcome back to Canada. No, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> I, I couldn't resist, though. <laughs> welcome back to Canada. You got anything to declare, bud? <laughs> nah, I ain't got nothing to declare, bud. <laughs> All right, don't be a hoser, eh? Have a nice day. For sure, eh? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, we're just gonna get the two four. You ain't got no two fours in your car now, do you? No, I don't got no two fours in my car. <laughs> oh, oh man, man. layers. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my extent of my Canadian travels. Is it, it was just because I could so I could say, oh, I was in Canada. That was really the whole reason for <laughs> crossing the border. You go anywhere? Or did you just turn around and go back? I I literally just I forget I I like drove like an hour maybe thirty minutes I don't know and then there was really like I was too far away from anything significant to like go right. visit somewhere so I just turned around and went back. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, if you had you see if you just decided to check her out check out Windsor, you might have been okay. Like go get you know go get something to eat or whatever, right? Or check something out. Get out and walk around and take a look. Cause there are parts of Windsor that are pretty nice. It's it's a nice looking town. Um, is that the closest but, city from Detroit? It's right across the river. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, it's not the only thing, because if you go further north to that other town, which is technically a suburb of Detroit, but it's further north, that's where they're building that other big bridge now, whatever the hell it's called. Um, you know, the record-breaking one. At least I think that's where yeah, they're I, building it. I, I don't know, but, I, I don't know what any, the name is. I should talk about <laughs> Anyways, yeah, but at the time, that would have either been the only bridge or the only one you would smartly go across because the other one, there would have been like nothing there for you to see. So, um, but the bottom line is, is if you had kept driving and just decided, oh, no, we're going to go further in, you would have been driving for another two and a half hours before you would have come across anything. It'd <laughs> right. take you another two and a half hours before you would have come across Cambridge. And at that time, Cambridge was like a one-horse town it had like seven people in a university. I mean, that was it. Like, if you've ever heard of the, of the university of Cambridge, there's why. It's a university town. And then there's a university <laughs> yeah. wall in Waterloo. Guess where that one is? Yeah. Waterloo. Guess what, city Waterloo. <laughs> Guess what city Waterloo is attached to? What? Cambridge. Know, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cambridge Waterloo is, there's like three towns and they're all attached to each other. And they're all the, of their own universities. So there, <laughs> it's like, it's kind of like uh, our, our, um, uh, what do you call it? The Boston un uh, universities there, the Massachusetts universities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're except that they're party ones. They're not, they're not, yeah. where you're going to become a doctor and a lawyer. I mean, well, you might, but it's, you know what I mean? They're, yeah. Uh, people say they're not party universities because they do have good reputations for the most part. But the fact of the matter is, they have record-breaking street parties every year. Like they, they yeah. Police have to show up and arrest people every year. <laughs> and everyone well, knows sure that's a lot. I asked them, they, say, oh, yeah. they say, oh, yeah, I'm from Cambridge, or yeah, I'm from Waterloo. So, oh, so, and they're young. I said, so are you a student, or were you a student last year? And they always always say yes. And it's all, oh, so you yeah. just like party all, all the time. And they have one, one of two ways they, act, they react to that. One is, well, I guess I did at the time or <laughs> yeah of course man 
<laughs> or better yet, for sure, eh? For sure, eh? <laughs> Get a two for only, I mean, right? only only hosers didn't party, eh? That's <laughs> right, eh? <laughs> You're getting pretty good at that. <laughs> Me and Kenny practice every time we go to the hockey game. So. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Like, you got to bring you got to bring them up to Canada for a hockey game and sit we'll in the stands. Around, like, we'll I'll like, record the whole. I'll record the whole thing so we can get like highlights of you guys chirping <laughs> in yeah. Canadian accents at a Leafs game. That'd be hilarious. Well, the thing is, you'd be chirping against the Leafs in a Canadian accent. Uh, yeah, the Leafs suck. Eh? Boston's a much better team. But well, at least a bunch of hoosers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maki, eh? <laughs> oh, man. All right. I don't know how we got so far off the top. I don't know. I, do, yeah. I need to mention before we run out of time um, about the uh, going back to the eclipse thing because it's kind of important. It's, it's Monday. Monday is the eclipse. If you're planning to get out there to see it, drive to it, fly to it, walk to it, or you're in the area, just remember two things. One, do not look at the damn thing with your naked eye unless it's in totality. You if you're not turn. sure of it, whether it's in totality, ask the guy standing next to you who probably does know. Um, there's a lot of things you can look up online how to make a device out of a box that allows you to see uh, without looking. You look in reverse of the sun. Uh, tons. You can Google that. You can use uh, AI to give you really good answers and directions. There's, get it on Google uh, or uh, what do you call it? YouTube. Um, but most importantly, for those who absolutely have to see it and not a shadow of it, you have to get proper, uh, uh, I want to say sunglasses, not sunglasses, um, eclipse glasses that are ISO rated. Yep. Uh, Robert, please. I, I don't remember the number. Uh, it was 12312-2 or something like that. Or oh, something like number. that. The, yeah. the bottom line is some of them, there are, it's possible to see some that have a fake stamp. So do a little bit of research. Yeah, but I mean, you can find them. All you got to do is just is look them up. I mean, there's so many people that sell them. You can get them on Amazon. I yeah, mean, we, well, that's we my point. You still, have to, you still have to be careful. If there's two batches, like two places on Amazon, for instance, that one's selling them for a dollar five, and the other one's selling them for $18 for a pack of three or something, uh, make sure that the one that's trying to sell it to for a dollar and five cents uh, doesn't have a fake ISO or ISO, whatever you call it, uh, number because it's easy to just fake that and print it on there or put it on because there are a few and you can end up going blind and it's not worth it so most of them are legit there are some that aren't but they're also really hard to get this quick now some of them won't be delivered in time so look it up don't forget if you live in an area that is anywhere near the path of totality it's likely you can probably go somewhere and find a pair for free if there's an astronomical society is that what they're called astronomical society i believe I think so. uh, a lot right. of astronomical societies will give out some for free um some yeah. of them only to people who are going to where they're going and if you sign up to go with them uh other right. places you go to some public parks they will give out some for free um you can also call up friends family uh check with people online and say does anybody have an extra pair because most people bought the, you know, packs of 10 or 20 or five or whatever and only needed one, two or three. And they're the, the cheap paper ones, but they work. Uh, some people went all out and got the glasses, I like the plastic rimmed. Still not great, but, but you know, a little bit more sturdy. Um, yeah. And they cost about the same amount. Chamber of Commerce gave them out for a little while. Well, yeah, there you go. See, and there are some places still that still are. Uh, mm -hmm. Do not look at it with your naked eye unless it's in totality. This also goes for if you're going to use your DSLR, your mirrorless camera, or your phone camera. If you're planning on using your S23, 24 Ultra, your iPhone 14 or 15 Pro Max, your uh, Google Pixel 7 Pro, 8 Pro, or whatever, don't hold it up like this to the sun and leave it there for 28 minutes or an hour and 35 minutes while you're taking pictures. You will not have a sensor left. Uh, even if it looks like it's still taking pictures, eventually it will, it will stop. Uh, or you'll just get blobs or something or dark spots or it'll stop working altogether. Um, it cannot handle that kind of radiation for any length of time. Remember, there is a lens, a very small lens, but there is a lens on that camera and that lens is focusing that light in. So if you, Jesus, how many times am I going to hit this today? Uh, <laughs> so you need a, a, a special ND filter. You can actually get 
uh, uh, I was going to say solar flare. I can't even remember what you call it again now. A solar <laughs> eclipse uh, filter for cameras. But yeah. you can do an ND filter as long as it's not variable because you could accidentally twist it. You don't want that. Um, but it has to be, I've read uh, 16 stop. I don't know that it really needs to be 16 stop because you don't necessarily need to keep your camera on it for that length of time. You could take a picture, block it, take a picture, block it, take a picture, block it. Mine, I think, is... Actually, I think mine's more than 16 stops, to be honest with you, so I really can't say much. Uh, I do have a very dark one, but I'm going to have a DIY. What I'm going to do is mine is this big. It'll cover all three cameras, which means I'll be able to use all three cameras if I want with the ND yeah. filter taking up about that much of a diameter. So I'm going to tape it here and here and just very gently hold it on one edge so I can take the picture with my volume button. And that is a perfect DIY thing. That'll work with anybody's phone if you can get your hands on one like that. If you can only get a smaller filter because they're less expensive and easier to find, um, you can still do it. Just make sure you know which camera lens you want to cover. And again, you can just tape it on there. And make sure it stays on there while the sun is shining. And you could take it off when it's in totality and just take a picture of the sun. It is also possible to take a three to five second uh, long exposure in totality with the ND filter on, uh, which is the only reason I would ever do that of the sun, of course, with the big dark filter on it. Um, and that might actually work. Actually, probably only be, be one or two you know, maybe two or three seconds at the most because uh, the sun moves and the corona will still be bright. But it, yeah, and it if you make this GoPro, nice GoPro, they sell the, the lens that you can put on the front. So you yeah, can, but, but you don't can, shoot. Don't shoot. Exactly. Nothing with no go. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. No stinking. Um, no, if that's all you got, you can still use it. What, what do you, yeah, but you're still going to get nothing but a pin. Uh, do, oh. do not shoot. <laughs> I have to implore you: Do not shoot an eclipse with a GoPro because okay, if you have that's all you wide. have and you want to film and, it and, and go you, for it, and if you drop it. it in, you've got the worst possible no definition whatsoever. It is so horrible. You're better off to use the cheapest cell phone you can get your hands on and crop it. Even uh, I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart as a photographer. Do not take a picture with any kind of equipment attached to it, a GoPro of, of an eclipse. Don't do it. It just looks terrible. Horrible. It's not worth it. Phones. Cell phones work much better. Even if it's an older cell phone, you can still use these tricks and you can still get a decent result. If you have manual controls or if you can get your hands on an app that allows you to do manual controls, if your phone doesn't natively have it, that's even better because you can, you know, check the ISO and 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 uh, shutter speed, and and set it to whatever you need to set it for to make sure it works perfectly fine. So that's my safety tips that I think was extremely, extremely, extremely necessary. <laughs> extremely necessary. I got to make sure that everyone does this right, doesn't go blind, and doesn't ruin their thousand dollar phones, or five thousand dollar cameras, or whatever. Uh, so. Everyone enjoy that can enjoy. And if you can't, um, just remember to beg all your friends and family that are in the path of totality to send you the pictures and or videos. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be pestered for some. <laughs> Although somebody didn't share any of their pictures with me uh, some years ago of their experience. Um, yeah, but it's some years ago. I don't know that I even knew that you were into photography then, to be honest with you. <clears throat> what, really? I don't uh, recall. We're talking, we're talking about the Google Plus days here, man. I mean, uh, this is seven years ago. We were both using the first Pixel. <laughs> yeah, Google Plus and we had Pixels. <laughs> Everybody knew we were into photography, uh, period. But anyways, I, I digress. I was just bugging you. Um, bottom line is, take your pictures, have fun. If you can't, um, if you get a chance to watch some video from NASA or any other astronomical society that's got some YouTube video of it, and there'll probably be lots and lots of content creators who will put their pictures and videos up on YouTube 
uh, yeah, I was, uh, what do you call that other one? Not TikTok. Twitter. Not Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having a, I'm having a heck of a day. <laughs> what is it called? Instagram. <laughs> they put their pictures on Instagram. That's what it's for, right? Instagram. <laughs> yes. There'll be thousands. There'll be hundreds of thousands of pictures of, of the eclipse on Instagram way more than the 2017 because it's going clear across the United States from Texas all the way through New York uh, and uh, into part of Canada, Southern Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritime provinces. And I'm actually getting notifications on my computer right now that I'm four days away from the, uh, from the uh, eclipse. <laughs> we'll figure and out. I just uh, yeah. shared that uh, 2017 album with you so you can look at it when we're done. Ah, okay. So you, you finally, finally did. You know what? You know what? If you have a really good one, if you have a really good one, should we put it up here? Uh, I'd have to look at, through it. I don't know that I have 55 time. Fifty-five minute. If we do, we'll put it at the fifty-six minute mark. Uh, yeah. No, you know what? But I mean? you have access to the to the phone. Well, yeah, so but I'm not going to share your picture you on here. With no, feel free to take one and put it on the on the in the edit. Okay. All right. Well, we'll yeah, we'll we'll do that. Why not? Okay. In the meantime, and in between time. Uh, this is a video, just so as you know, it's pre-recorded. Um, well, obviously the audio, same audio. Um, so it is, it is, it's actually Wednesday when we're recording this right now. Uh, we want to make sure that this is out, I believe Friday. If we can have it out tomorrow, Thursday, it will be. But if you're listening to it and it's Friday, that's fine. The bottom line is everything that we mentioned about the eclipse for the safety glasses, uh, uh, and the tips on how to, how to shoot with a phone. If you weren't aware of this already and you know anyone that wants to do these things, share that information, please. Google it. Make sure you get everything you can. Your eyes are safe. You need, uh, sorry. Safety of your eyes is important is what I'm trying to say. In the meantime, <laughs> yes. we really got to get going because we got one minute or less. <laughs> one minute. Here. I'm not even joking. Uh, oh, sorry. It's, I'm reading it wrong. It's actually three minutes. It's not as much of a hurry as I thought. <laughs> So we'll let Robert read us out. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm Robert with the United States. And uh, we will catch you on the next episode. Lionel? You have a good one.